Hello and welcome. It's the chat, and I am Manny. My guest on the program is a superstar, a songwriter, dancer, and choreographer of African American extraction. Join me in a moment. Jeffrey Glenn Daniel, born on 24th of August 1955, he is a 63-year-old American dancer, singer-songwriter, and choreographer. Most notable for being a member of the R&B group Shalama from the mid-1970s to 1980s. In Nigeria, he is best known as an idol series judge. In the 1980s, Jeffrey became a style icon with his ever-changing hairstyles and unique dress sense. He was often seen on the London club scene with Banarama, Wham and Culture Club. Jeffrey had performed the backslide dance on TV and taught the dance to Michael Jackson as his personal choreographer. Michael made it popular and named it the Moonwalk Dance. The TV appearance introduced Jeffrey to a new generation of dancers. Jeffrey and his soul-trained dance partner, Jody Waitley, along with Howard Hewitt, became the world-famous soul-funk group, Shalama. One of the hit songs was the popular Night to Remember. They outsold all foreign bands during the early 1980s. Shalama has sold over 25 million records worldwide and collected no less than 100 gold, silver and platinum awards, including a Grammy. In 1983, Shalama broke up due to unfair treatment by their handlers. After leaving the group, Jeffrey got the opportunity to work with Michael Jackson, who had always been a fan of his dance style since watching him on Soul Train. He was hired as co-choreographer on the Bad and Smooth Criminal videos. In April 2007, he went on a Soul Train tour in the UK, where he performed his own song. He also appeared as the compare on Michael Jackson's Thriller Live in May 2007. He was later employed as a creative and choreographic consultant on Michael's World Tours and the video Ghosts. Jeffrey's music and dance expertise was also employed when he became a consultant at the MJJ Productions record label. Between 2010 and 2015, Jeffrey split his time between Africa, where he gets much of his inspiration, and Japan. He has featured as a judge on the popular talent show, Nigerian Idol. Jeffrey is still performing regularly with Shalama, with a strong lineup in Howard Hewitt, Caroline Griffey, and backed by a seven-piece band. Jeffrey is a blessed man with two grandsons. Welcome, Jeffrey Daniels. You look much the same. The time I saw you, the very first time was in 1982. Yeah, yeah. How do you keep yourself this fit? I mean, come to think of it, 1982, you must be about 20 something. Or... Yeah, yeah. Tell me about your early beginnings. I know we had some of it already, your bow data, mm. but I mean, you were a dancer mm. of notes with Don Cornelius and the Soul Train. Right. How did you get into the, the program in the first place? Okay, it wasn't easy because uh, Soul Train had a, a dancer guest list or something like that, or a mailing list, and I wasn't on it. But I met a Soul Train dancer by the name of Tyrone Proctor. And to today, he's my big brother. And he's the one who got me into Soul Train. But when I went in there, they said, okay, you can wait for Tyrone, but don't dance. It's just sit down. And a record came on and I snuck out on the dance floor and I got up there anyway. And I got reprimanded for that, but I just continued coming back until one day, the director of the show, uh, Chuck Johnson, came and said, uh, Jeffrey, they want you to, they want you to keep yes, coming back. But who taught you dancing? I started at home with my mother and my two sisters. I'm the youngest in my family. And my mother was a classical pianist and she played piano in church every Sunday. So I started singing at home. I was learning music at home and then dancing with my mother and my sisters at home. I'm the youngest in the family. So I didn't know that you're supposed to stop one day and get a regular job. <laughs> And, and, and then soon afterwards, uh, you got yourself in Soul Train and uh, you were picked up alongside uh, J J Jody Watley and... Um... Yeah, Jody and myself were a dance couple on the TV show and we started rising and becoming one of the most recognized dance partners on the show. Then the show started 
a record label, Soul Train Records, which became Solar Records. And so when they started a group, I auditioned for the Soul Train gang group, but I didn't make it. One of the members dropped out and they put me in it, but then it was the end of the group. So they said, we want to do something new with you. So they built a group around me, and that's Shalama. And so Jody had never sang before, but her mother was in our choir at church. So Jody had it in her, but she had never done it before. So I was coaching Jody's voice for her. I've known Jody since she's 12 years old. And so, so we go way back. So then um, there was two lead singers before Howard. There was Gary Mumford, who sang on Uptown Festival. There was Gerald Brown, who sang on Take That to the Bank. Then Howard Hewitt came in, and that became the Shalama. Was Shalama a big group before it came to Nigeria? Was it big? It, it, we were big and climbing because the reason why we came this way was we started becoming international. So on the way to our UK tour and uh, our tours in Amsterdam, then we came into Nigeria first and from Nigeria. I, I know you had contact with Ben Murray Bruce. What did he uh, tell you about Nigeria before you agreed to come? It, it was your first time in, you know, in Nigeria then, wasn't it? Right. Well, I'm a different type of person. So what it meant to me may not have meant to, the same to the other members. But Ben was, uh, came to L.A. and we met him, and uh, he was very ambitious, and he was uh, communicating with Don Cornelius and Dick Griffey, so when he invited us, I was excited because my mother always told me since I was a kid, you're African. So it was my first time to come to Africa. So when I stepped out at that airport, <laughs> which is called MM1, I kissed the ground. <laughs> really? Oh, yes, I did, because it was my first time coming back home. That was symbolic for me. Mm. Shalama was such a big hit here in Nigeria when you arrived, you know, um, you took everybody by storm. I, I remember I was one of those on stage at that time. Now suddenly we don't hear any more about Shalama. After how many albums? Seven, seven albums that I, I recorded with Shalama. Right. So, so what happened? Why, why did you break up? It was the record company. They weren't being kind to us and uh, they were being unfair uh, with the financial side of the business. Was that really? Were you the leader of the band? I'm the founding member. Okay, but, you're the founder. But, but we didn't look at it like, I'm a leader, you're a leader, but I'm okay. the founding member of the group. I, I brought Howard Hewitt into the group. And of course, I brought Jody into the group as well. But the point is that, um, I'll, tell, I'll tell you a story. Jody and I moved in West Hollywood, and we're staying across the street from The Temptations, renting an apartment. And I said, wait a minute, The Temptations, one of the biggest names in show business, legendary, is renting an apartment? And I said, I don't want to go down like that. And apparently, Solar was running on that same formula that Motown was doing of not being fair with the artists. Now, back then, we didn't know the industry, but we learned as we went along. In today's context, these young kids, they go in there, they know the, they're going in there for the money, they want the money, and they're getting paid. But back then, you know, Young people, we didn't know the industry back then. Same thing that happened why the Jacksons left Motown. You know, this for their own so emancipation. You think, you, think, you think you were shortchanged, you know, sort of. You we were, were being, not getting enough returns from all your efforts. Or what? We were being long changed. Uh -huh. <laughs> we were being long changed. We made money, of course we made money, but we weren't getting the money. And even then I said, okay, fine. So I started doing other projects. Oh. And they even wanted a piece of those projects too. And I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. You got your hand in this pocket, this pocket, this pocket. And if I go and create a pocket, you want your hand in that pocket too. I said, no, no, it can't be like that. So was it, was it in your interest, you know, to, to break up the band as it seems, you know? I mean, you left the band and uh, the band split up, yeah. right? And um, you had projects working with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, that came later. That came when I started choreographing because in actuality, Michael Jackson made me a choreographer. Now I did choreography for Shalomar and this and that. And I, I did one for Kerry Lucas's uh, song, Show Me Where You're Coming From, but I wasn't like a choreographer on the scene. After I worked with Michael Jackson, I was in demand. And that's everybody. If you're, if you're a bass player and you play for Michael Jackson, everybody wants you, you know? So, and I'm the first street dance choreographer for MTV. I'm the first street uh, of the other choreographers. They come from jazz training and the dance schools and the tight pants, so <laughs> that stuff. So, so how did Michael Jackson spot you? I mean, was it on the soul train? Exactly, what? exactly. Okay, so you invented the moonwalk dance? Well, 
I can't say I specifically invented the dance, but I modified it and made it mine because when I first saw it, it was just like a scoot, 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 right? And it's all an evolution because from Soul Train you had popping, locking, uh, the robot, and it all was, was an evolution. The electric boogaloos were the ones who came up with the whole popping thing, the body poppy thing and the boogaloo. And so one of the steps they came up with was this backslide, was a scooting step. I wanted to do it all the way across stage because I was performing with Shalomar now. And I want to do it on stage, so I put the long strides, I smoothed it out into the way you see that that I perfected it. Right, okay, so I mean, did you get a lot of money from, you know, assisting Michael Jackson with the dance, the backslide? Uh, I worked with Michael for 20 years. Off 20 and on. years? Yeah, I had a 20 year uh, relationship with him off and on. and. Uh, I choreographed this bad video. I choreographed Smooth Criminal, uh, the Ghost video. I'm creative consultant, and my last job in America was between 1997 to 99 to night to 2000. Was working at MJJ Music, Michael Jackson's record label. I was a creative consultant in A&R. Mm. What, what, what's your view of Michael Jackson? Um, People try to put this like victim thing on him, like, oh, he was so sad, he was so lonely, he was a victim of his, in a sense, he was a victim of his fame, but he was a very happy person. Michael was, he'll sit here and joke and laugh with you. He'll talk about uh, social issues with you, inequality issues with you. So people are talking about his skin color and all these things, but Michael is well aware of the fact that he's black and he uh, talked about a lot of black issues, especially things that are going on in the industry. You can see one speech of his on YouTube now when he was calling out the people at Sony and how they were treating black entertainers. So, but um, he was, I, I know in my lifetime, I'll never meet another person like him for many reasons, not just because he's such a great entertainer. Well, was he an influence in your music? I mean, you could have been an influence on his dance steps. But of course, growing what, up with the he? Jackson 5, oh my God. We were all influenced by the Jackson 5 because it was the first time you saw a group that was my age you know, and they were young and they were out there doing their thing at the highest level. So when the Jackson 5 were on TV, that's all we talked about at school the next day, you know, and especially little Michael with this amazing voice and that, the dancing. So it's, it's the same thing I was doing all along, the dancing and the singing together, this and that, you know. You are trying to get a reunion of uh, Shalomar, isn't it? Not a reunion. We've, all, we've been reunited. Uh, Shalomar reunited in 2000 and we've been touring the world since then. Japan. South of France, uh, Amsterdam, uh, the UK. We're doing. It. We just toured the UK this past uh, May. We sold out the London Palladium. Totally sold it out on May 6th. And I'm on my way back to the UK in August for a couple of shows. And then in the fall we have a tour. And we're going to Uganda in December. Well, you have not done any recording, you know, since you split up. We just recorded a new single, and it's called The Real Thing. So if you guys go on YouTube, uh, iTunes, or that, Shalomar, The Real Thing, and we're back with our original producer, Liam. Yeah, but the, the, the Shalomar that you started out with, that you came to Nigeria, has... How would you do it? Jody Jeffrey Watley. Daniels and Judy Watley. Yeah. So where is Judy Watley? She's not in, in the new group, is she? No, she's not. What happened? Uh, when Howard and I decided, because we did a song with L.A. Cool J and Babyface, they, we did a remix of For the Lover in You, and they did a hip-hop version. And that's the first time Howard and I really talked since I left the group. <laughs> so we're looking from like uh, 83, 84, up until 96, Howard and I hadn't really communicated. But when we were brought together with uh, L.A. Cool J and Babyface, it made sense. Hey, let's do this. So I went with Jody and I, and we asked her to join the group, and Jody was doing her solo thing, and she felt that she didn't need, and I said, hey, Shalomar is big. So how did you uh, recruit, so to speak, uh, Caroline Griffith now? Well, because Howard and I were just doing Shalomar featuring Howard Hewitt and Jeffrey Daniel. And we're on stage at Wembley Arena in front of 14,000 people, and it's just the two of us. And it was like, it didn't really balance well because Shalomar has that female entity in the group and that's what it's known for, plus the parts that the female sings. So it made sense to bring in a girl. Now, how do we replace Jody Watley? You don't replace Jody Watley, but what we did was found someone that was already in our family. It was Carolyn Griffey, who was the daughter of Dick Griffey and the daughter of Carrie Lucas, who's also on a solar label. And it just made sense. And she brings a new texture. She's younger than Howard and myself. 
but she has a more jazz and gospel texture with it too. So she's not imitating Jody, but she brings something else with it that gives us a, a, another dimension. And, and it's, we're out there killing. Pick a question. Jeffrey Daniel, do you think Michael Jackson's death left a vacuum in the music industry? He left a huge crater in the music industry. With people like Michael Jackson gone, that bar of quality has been removed. So now what direction are a lot of young people going in? Um, I, don't, I don't mean to bash people because I know each generation has his own thing, but what do young ladies being dressed like a pole dancer have to do with singing a record? Or why does an entertainer have to have six women laying in bed with him and about 12 women laying around his swimming pool? Do, do you really live like that? I mean, who does that <laughs> in real life, you know? What, but young people are being influenced by these images because they, they think it's real, you know? Why does a woman have to have half of her bum hanging out, just bouncing it into the cameras to make a video interesting? I mean, what does that got to do with anything? And black people, Africans, we should expect more out of ourselves because we taught the world science. We taught the world math. We taught the world literature. We taught the world spirituality, which they created religions with. So we brought life into the world. So I think Africans should hold themselves at a higher standard. And I, I can't preach to people and tell people what to do, but I think when people, when you really know who you are and, and where you're from and what you're doing and where you should be going, you have a sense of responsibility, especially if you're putting stuff out there to the public. You eventually got into the idol here in Nigeria. Mm. Uh, what are your thoughts about the program? Of course, it's uh, an imitation of the American Idol, but did it fulfill the sort of problems you see in the Nigerian music industry and entertainment industry? The program itself never reaches its objective because none of the kids from the show are, are in the industry. So the show itself didn't reach its objective. Why? I don't know. But me being on the show and auditioning for kids in uh, Enugu, Port Hardcore, Abuja, uh, Benin, all these different places. I mean, it goes back to why I came back to Nigeria. Because I said, America, that pocket of black people, that you got James Brown, Aretha Franklin, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Quincy Jones, blah, 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 blah. Could you imagine what's waiting in the most populous black country in the world? And sure enough, I saw some of the most amazing talent a Nigerian idol of kids, and all they need is a real, authentic platform, and they're dying. I, I helped carry some of the kids, Joe Blue, Steve O, Yenka Onka, out of my own pocket. I was helping even make their own records and trying to carry them for a while until it got overbearing for me because I'm just me. So what are you doing here? I, I tour with Shalomar, and that's my primary source of income. Uh, and I do work sometimes at the Elamine International School in Abuja. I love working with children. I, I like uh, helping to inspire and, and to... You teach, you, you teach them dance steps or what? Not so much. It's just dance steps, but uh, about uh, growing up. You know, dancing is a, is a, coincidental, a coincidental thing. If you want to be a dancer or a doctor or a lawyer or whatever, but people need to be encouraged. People, you know, have to have... Uh, 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 a pattern that they know that they can be, or they can become. You have lived here for a while now. Yeah. Have you got a citizenship? I don't have a citizenship yet, but uh, I'm re renewing my resident card. But uh, the thing about it is, what makes a country are the people. So if you love the people, you'll love the country. And you have to understand that, I mean, I've, I've lived all over the world. I've been in Japan 20 something years. I've toured everywhere. Nigerians are some of the most hospitable people you'll ever find on the planet. You know, their music, their food, their clothing, you know, everything about it. This is a wonderful what, experience. What, what have you ventured into, into so far? I love the food. I love the lifestyle. I love the people here. And I mean, I have family here now, you know, I, I adopt people. You know, I adopted a family in Abuja. Uh, Femi Kuti and Yini Kuti are my brother and sister. I adopted them. Were you at the Africa Shrine when the French president visited? Yes, I was. I was there. What, what was your impression of his uh, 
visit? It was very peculiar for me. Of course, I think Nigerians felt really um, gratified that the French president would come to Nigeria and visit the shrine, which no president has visited the shrine before. And so it, it was a uh, kind of a historical thing. But at the end of the day, he made a speech and I listened to his speech about how he would like Africans to show France, uh, Nigerians to show France, how Nigerians are and stuff. In my mind, Europeans have always known who Africans were and they've always known what we're capable of doing. They've just been exploiting it all this time. African Americans, you know, are very big in the music industry. How come they're not, you know, uh, making enough money in the music industry? We have built that industry so big by our talents and our creativity, and we don't own it. And that's what I respect about Nollywood and the Nigerian industry. It might not be as big as America, but these people here created their own industry and they built their own industry. I have to tip my hat to channels, you know. For you, that. See, you seem quite a number of talents here in, in, in the Nigerian music industry. What are your thoughts, really? How far do you think they can travel? I think they can go to the end of the universe because Nigerians are some of the most resilient people on the planet. So having said that, um, the only thing I would like to see is for them to remain true to who they are. Some of the young kids want to emulate what's happening in America, like a Little Wayne or, or Rick Ross or these people, but that's not your story. Let the world see your story. That's what's going to be interested to them. One, one problem that blacks have, and this is universal in America, here, whatever. If I get rich and I got money, I just want to get the big cars and the jewelry and all that and flaunt it to the other people rather than helping this person. What the Jews do is they got two millionaires. They'll invest in this person's business and now you got three. They'll invest in this person. And if this person's business fails, these people will take the money and pull in and help that person. So now you got a whole community of you know, wealthy people and people coming up. And if we have that mindset, rather than just showing off our wealth, now we get a little money and what do we want to do? Spend it on all these designer names and this stuff and that's us what the young kids are doing. Well, if, if, you're, if you're in a society where the majority of the society is living like that and you see that the country isn't really gotten where it should be, how are you celebrating? What is there to celebrate? You're about to be cast away on an island <laughs> and uh, you're allowed only five items. It's just a test of your endurance. What are the five most important things you take along with you? My guitar, because I'd have to play music. Uh, a collection of music to listen to because music relaxes me and inspires me and makes me feel good. Uh, the lady that I'm in love with to keep me company? No, you're not allowed to. Not a person? No. Person. Okay. A picture of the lady I'm in love with. <laughs> and who, who, who's that? And videos of her. Do you want to mention her name? The lady I'm in love with. <laughs> Come on, Jeffrey. And... Does she know that? She knows. And you don't have a name for her? I have a name for her. Darling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I would say, what's a versatile food? I would have to have fruits because you get direct vitamins from fruits right. and fresh drink of water. Oh, excellent. Yeah, obviously not the church going time. Um, I was brought up in the church. Really? My mother was playing piano in church every Sunday. And even your Bible tells you that when you're a child, you think as a child and when you're an adult, you think as an adult, right? And we have been very faithful and very, uh, how can I say, we have been so such good Christians, we're good Muslims, and that, right? I've, I've read the Bible all my life because the book is not going to change. It's written and it's not going to change. You can read, you can, they say that it's the Word of God, so you'll always find another interpretation, whatever. But if you're studying medicine, you wouldn't just read that one book for the rest of your career. You would evolve, right? So. And in my uh, research, and, and I'm a stickler for information and researching, and coming to find out, 
If God created us, and we're, and we're the first people on this earth, then we weren't Christians when he created us. We weren't Muslim when he created us. But we had spirituality. Within the past 2,000 years, these religions came. I'll leave it there. Thanks a lot, Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> so nice talking to you. Thank you very much, I Manny. Enjoyed your company. It's my pleasure. That's where we come to the end of the program for this week. Join us next week for another program. It's been The Chat, and I am Manny. The Chat is produced by Channels Television. You can watch it again online. Just visit our social media platforms, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Thank you.